Hi, and welcome back to my shop. In my last episode of my Live Edge haul table, I finished milling all of my aprons and applying the veneers. So I now have veneered aprons that will go all the way around with consistent grain from a single piece of cherry. So my next step is to start looking at joining each of the aprons to the corresponding legs. I'm probably going to start with this front apron because it's going to be the most challenging. Not only just because it has a curved front, which certainly adds an element of uh, difficulty, but if you'll recall back to my design, the aprons actually don't meet the legs at a perfect 90 degree angle on the front or the back. There's about a 5 degree angle in there. So I'm going to look at a couple of different options for how I'm going to perform that joinery, and then I'm also going to reveal a little bit of a surprise for what I'm going to do for the side aprons. Earlier on in this project, I actually double stick taped my legs to the bottom of the slab of walnut, and I did that so that I could play around with um, different widths of aprons, so that I made sure I was using the right width that would balance well with the piece. So before I can remove these and start looking at the joinery, I just want to measure the distance between the front two legs and then the distance between the front and back legs as well, because that's going to determine exactly the length of my aprons. Now I have to keep in mind here that the angle right here is about a 5 degree angle. It's not a 90 degree angle. So I'm going to be careful to note the distance is at the very top of the leg, not at the bottom. So it's 37 and a quarter inches. And then the sides are a little bit more straightforward because this actually is a 90 degree joint between the legs. And that's exactly 9 inches. So now that I have those dimensions, I can safely pop my legs off and then I can store the top away where it's not going to get beat up during the course of the construction. So I've gone ahead and I'm looking at the top of my front apron here. Um, I've selected my best two legs. You always want to put your best leg forward in a project like this. So this is my front right leg. And I've got some padding down here because I want to flip over my front apron and I want to make sure I protect those, those corners. Now I've gone ahead and marked my distance, and again the distance I needed was from the top of that angle. And then I've used my protractor to mark that 5 degree angle. And just to remind you, the reason we have that angle is that the leg slopes down at a 5 degree angle where it meets. And I think that's going to create an interesting uh, kind of visual design element. So that leaves me with a couple of options on how to create that joinery. I could use hand tools and cut a traditional tenon into the apron and then cut the mortises into the leg. The challenge here is that I had to do all of my um, curves before I could cut the joinery on this piece. And it would be really difficult for me to clamp this into my vise effectively and I would, I think, risk you know, damaging that veneer on the front. So what I also considered was using my uh, Festool Domino XL joiner. And if I take a couple of dominoes that are essentially the size that I would use for this type of joint, um, and I lay them along that line, because the, the domino has to cut along the same plane as the angle of the, uh, the end of your stock. And I still have plenty of room here. I was a little bit worried that because of that angle, I might be getting really close to the top here, cutting the mortise. But that really doesn't look like it's going to be uh, any danger here. So this actually makes the, the joinery a lot easier because I can just cut this 5 degree angle straight off on my compound miter saw. And then I can just use the domino to then cut the mortises on both the leg and the apron. And the only kind of funky piece to that is instead of the leg sliding in um, parallel to the, the plane of the top here, it'll actually slide in at that 5 degree angle. So what that means is this is the first joint that I'll have to glue up, um, but there's really no reason that, that I can't uh, have that angle with those tenons. I'm going to go ahead now and extend that 5 degree angle mark to the front of my piece as well, because I'm essentially just going to lay this on its back when I cut that miter and I want to make sure I have the angle correct. Over at my miter saw, this is quite honestly I think one of the few times that having the, uh, the laser line actually makes a lot of sense. I think for the most part they tend to be more of a marketing gimmick than a useful tool. But in this case I don't really trust the markings on my saw for the, the miter angles. 
um, I trust my marking gauge a whole lot more. So what I've done is I've adjusted this so that that laser line matches up to my pencil line perfectly. And then that's going to allow me to cut that five degree miter on the end and not have to worry about cutting the joinery at the same time. And then back over the bench, you can get the first sort of idea. I will leave a little bit of a reveal when I do my joinery to give myself a little wiggle room, but you get the first idea of kind of what that, that joint's gonna look like. Next, I have to start laying out where I'm gonna have my mortises. So first thing I did is I marked a center point on this piece of stock for the front right leg. And I'm gonna lay this out so that I do have about, you know, that 16th to 8th inch reveal on the front. I'm just going to kind of eyeball that. I'm not going to actually measure it. I just need to get something close. And then I'm just going to extend that center mark over to my apron. And so I know that's the line at which I want to have all of my mortises cut all the way top to bottom. Now, because the front is curved, I really can't register the domino uh, against the front. Typically, that's what you would want to do. You'd register against the front and then the front of the leg with a little bit of an offset. So I'm actually going to have to kind of reverse engineer this a little bit. So I'm going to carefully lay this down on its front once again, and I'm going to support it with some foam because I really don't want that edge um, really resting on my bench at any point. And then I'm just gonna clamp this into my end vise, just enough so that it's secure. And then that's gonna give me a nice um, sturdy surface in which to lay down and mark out the, uh, the mortise with the domino. So then I can set my depth of cut. So if I, there's a line right on the edge of the domino. If I line that up, then I know I'm going to be cutting this in the right place. Next, I need to determine where my dominoes need to go along the length of the piece. I've gone ahead and marked the midpoint of this domino, and I'm going to just lay that midpoint right on the edge of my miter cut. And I just want to have this far enough away from the top here that I don't risk having any weakness in the material there. And then I'm just going to mark roughly where the center of that domino was. And that's where my first cut is going to go. I've gone ahead and cut the mortises into my aprons. So now I just need to extend my lines across to cut the joinery in the leg. So I make sure that the top is nice and flush and then I can just extend my marking lines right across. So I've got my fence depth setting now so that I know you can't see it from this camera angle, but I've got the center mark of my mortise lined up on the edge here. And then I've got my marks on the top so I know exactly where each mortise needs to go. So I just look through that window again, hold it steady, and I'm ready to cut. And now with any luck, and I really wouldn't mind a little luck, <laughs> that's going to be fun getting out again. And here you got it. I've got that nice eighth inch reveal and the joinery is really tight. It's a nice, clean joint there. So hopefully I will have equally good luck doing the other side. And now the moment of truth. And 
And there we go. Here's the first look at that assembled front of the carcass. So I got all the angles right. I got the reveal pretty consistent. The reveal's a little bit wider on the right-hand side, but I'll be able to fix that just uh, by fine-tuning it with hand planes. So I'm pretty good shape, and now I can go and work on the sides and the back. Now that I have the joinery for the front apron completed, I can move on to the back apron. And that's gonna be a little bit of a simpler process because it's obviously flat on both sides and even thickness all the way around. The only thing is I wanna make sure that I'm, I've marked the back so that I can cut that the exact same length as the front apron. And that'll ensure I have a nice square case. The one other slight change I'm gonna make on the back apron is because this is much thinner stock than what I had with the front apron, I'm gonna switch from the 12 millimeter domino, which is you know, pretty substantial relative to the thickness of this material, and I'm gonna go with the, uh, the 10 millimeter. I think that still leaves me plenty of material on either side of that mortise that it'll still be a strong joint, and it still gives me a nice beefy tenon. I only needed to change the depth setting for the fence. So I just drew a mark that uh, depicts the, the center of the thickness of the stock and then I lined that up with my mark on the domino so I know that it's gonna generate a mortise that's dead center. And then I redrew my marks the same distance from each end as I did on the front apron. And then I can leave the depth setting exactly the same because even though I'm using um, dominoes that are not as thick, they're still the exact same length. Now one thing that I ran into in marking this last side here is going to extend my pencil marks and then I realized that the, there's not a perfect mate between these two joints. You can see there's a little space at the top and the bottom here. In other words, I could rock this back and forth a little bit. And that's no good because I want to make sure I don't have any um, you know, crack. So what that tells me is that my leg, in all likelihood, isn't perfectly jointed or flat on this face. It's got a slight curve to it because I just cut this um, on my, my miter saw, so I know that's perfectly straight. So what I'll do is I'll just hit this with a hand plane a couple of times, either a smoother or a number five, and just get that nice and flat before I make my final cut. So I'm just gonna take my smoother plane. This is a small enough area that uh, this should be perfectly sufficient. I don't need a longer plane to get a flat reference surface. And I'm just gonna take a couple passes and kind of focus on that middle piece there and then try to get one continuous shaving and then I know I'm done. Now that I've got my gap closed up, I can go ahead and finish drawing those lines. And here it goes. This should give you a good angle of how easy it is to line up to that pencil mark. And then a quick test fit will let me know that I did everything right. There we go. There you have it.